Okay, y'all. Just drop whatever you're doing and turn up your radio, cause it's time for body love. Here's what happened last time. He's not responding, doctor. He's going comatose. Well, they told us it can take hours and hours to take out somebody's kidney and put it in somebody else. And sure enough, it's taking hours and hours. Fred's surgery should have been finished first and Rosalind second. If they're bringing Fidelia news but not me. He's on mechanical support now. I know we don't have much time. Well? What did the doctor tell you? Yeah, come on, girl. Rosalind pulled through just fine. Doctor said she's got a lot of fight in her. Yeah, well, that seems to run in your family. You got that right. Anyway, I'm going to go on back to body love now that I know she's okay. So if Miles ever bothers to show up, you just tell him the good news, all right? I know Miles hasn't been acting like himself for the past week, but never thought he'd go so far as to not to even show up for his own wife's surgery. Mm. Sonny was supposed to bring him in, wasn't he? Oh, well, there you go. The two of them are probably bonding with Mr. Jack Daniels as we speak. Did they tell you anything else about the surgery? Well, yeah, but nothing in plain English. The part I got was that she pulled through okay. That's the important part, all right. Then I guess now the big thing is to find out what happened to Miles. I just told you what happened to Miles. I'll bet you anything he and Sonny are off somewhere drinking. Ever since he didn't have Rosalind healthy enough to organize his life for him and cater to his every whim, he started falling apart piece by piece. Now, Fidelia, that's not true. He has been coping with a lot of stress that would kill anybody else. Oh, yeah? Remember what Roz told us about that Sunday when he cussed out Patricia Higgins and then stormed off to a bar? Told Roz he wouldn't help her do her dialysis. That's not coping with stress. That's just... Look, when I've got a lot of stress on me, I get out and exercise. That's how you deal with... Hush! Now, hush. Here comes Patricia. Mm, Patricia, Lord, you look like you're about to fall out. This is... this is Dr. Blair. Good afternoon. I came to see Patricia to give her an update on her husband's condition. There were some complications. But he's going to be fine now. Praise the Lord. By coincidence, though, I happen to notice that the recipient in this transplant was a Rosalind Armstrong. Are you her family? I'm her sister. Why? I'm afraid I have some very bad news. Yes, sir. Yeah, hey, uh, that guy I brought in here this morning, the one who passed out. Mr. Armstrong? Yeah, Miles Armstrong. Seems like they've had him back there for hours. Let me check his status. Well, I do have an updated status on Mr. Armstrong. Are you a family member, Mr.? Uh, Baxter, Sonny Baxter. No, but I'm a friend. Hmm. I'm afraid all I can tell you then is that his condition is still being evaluated. (sighs) Yeah, I get you. You can't tell anybody but family how he's really doing. So he could be dead for all I know. That really is all I can tell you. (sighs) Should have got him here sooner. Should have seen there was something wrong with him and just come straight in here as soon as he got in the car. Do you want us to let you know when another family member... Mr. Baxter! got bad news. That other doctor just told me Rosalind was going to be fine. And she is. But are you all members of her family? Yes, we are. We are Rosalind's closest relatives. Mama! Shh! Our emergency room staff have been trying to reach Mrs. Armstrong all morning. Apparently her husband was brought in about 8 o'clock in critical condition. Critical? What happened to him? I don't have the full report, but apparently he suffered a massive stroke. He's in ICU now, where they're evaluating his condition. Lord in heaven. Well, now you know why his wife wasn't answering the phone. That uh, seems to be the case, yes. Doctor, is Miles going to be... The last I have heard, he had slipped into a coma. Now that we know you are his family, you should get more information here very soon. For the moment, I have to say, his outlook does not appear promising. Stay tuned for more Body Love right after this.
And now, back to Body Love. Can't believe this. First Roz in the hospital, then Fred Higgins. Now Miles fixing to die if he ain't dead already. Seems just like when things are... I see you, I see you! (sighs) Better start paying better attention to driving. People see me cross a yellow line just once, they'll I'll be saying, there's old Sonny drunk driving again. Of course, they're gonna say I was drunk driving to the hospital this morning, and that's why I didn't get miles there in time. Yeah, so it don't matter what I do. Shouldn't have just run out like I did. Of course, there's nothing I can do but stand around and wait, cause I ain't family, like I ain't family to nobody. Hey, is that Kevron's car park right in front of? (laughs) Yeah, he won't be in there drinking at this time of day. I can go in there and just sit down for a minute and see what's up with Kevron. Well, this is too much. Hand me my purse from over there. This is just plain too much. Fidelia, you can't just walk out of here. Don't tell me what I can do and what I can't. I should have been back at the salon 15 minutes ago. I haven't seen Rosalind yet, and she's the only person I came up here to check on. And now Miles is in a coma, and there ain't nothing I can do about that. But my time is up, and I gotta go. Fidelia, the customers at Body Love can wait Until another day. They all knew this was the day of Rosalind's surgery. Look, just listen to me. When Ros wakes up, I don't want any of you telling Rosalind about this before I can get back here and tell her. Understand? Now hand me my purse so I can get out of here. Well. That woman talking even crazier than usual. And that's saying a lot. I just wish we knew more about Miles. Daddy, go on down there and find out what's going on, will you? Some of the folks here know you. I I will, baby. I'll go see what I can find out. Start with the intensive care unit. I know where to start. Mama, what if he's... What if he doesn't? I can't hardly believe it. But I guess this thing really could kill him. And just when his wife was finally getting a new lease on life. He can't die now. He can't. Not when I still have so much I needed to tell him. And Rosalind. When Ross wakes up, and after that, who's going to take care of her? We'll get it all worked out, honey. You just come here and hold on to me. That's right. Sonny, my man! You are just in time to join in the celebration. Come here. Looks like you're having a party. Nothing formal, my friend. Nothing elaborate. Just five or six of my crew cheering me on as I rise to a new plateau. Hey, try that again in plain English. The music. Man, the music. Those tracks you've been hearing me put down in my little studio. I mean... Don't tell me you never heard all that. (laughs) You sold something. Not merely something. I sold everything. We got to deal with a producer. We got a contract with a distributor. We got the promise of more where that came from. Hey, that's that's all right. (laughs) Well, I can tell folks, you know, I knew you back when. And they'll say you're lying, but that's okay. You'll know the truth. So this is how come you didn't go to the hospital when your dad was donating the kid? I've monitored the situation by telephone, if you must know, and have been informed that he has some difficulty but arose like the phoenix. Yeah, well, I bet your mama would like to know why you weren't there. She's going to forget all about that when daddy comes out feeling fine and when she gets the word about my contract. So, God's in his heaven and all's right with the world, and you got to let me buy you a drink. Come on, tighten this fella up. Scotch, rocks. <laughs> Kevron, come on, you know I can't. I can't, I, you can't have just one. This much I know. That cold turkey thing is just a myth and we're going to prove it. Come on, we're celebrating my triumph. Kevron, look, listen to me. I can't drink and you know it. And something else. Yeah. 
Miles. He had some kind of fit or something, a stroke, I guess. I got him to the emergency room, but now they won't tell me how he is. I'm thinking maybe, you know, he's... If Miles Armstrong has been called to glory, my friend, there's not a thing in the world you or I can do about it. But right now, you should be raising a glass and toast to your friend Kevron, who is just about the only person you know to who something good has happened in a long time. Am I right about that, or am I right? You are right about that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Just drink it down. There now. Feeling any better? A little bit. Mama, what? What is it? You're looking at me kind of strange. I'm glad you sent your father out. I think you and me got to talk. About what? Mama, don't you understand what's happening here? Mouse is in a coma and maybe he's going to die. And Roz, she, she doesn't even know because when she wakes up... I know all that. I ain't wondering about them. What I'm wondering about is you. I don't... What do you mean? Listen, baby girl. I know you've just had the shock of a lifetime, but you took it mighty strange. I mean, what's all this about things you had to tell Miles? What was it you had to tell the husband of your best friend? Mama, it's just that it had to happen right now with Rosalind sick and in his surgery. It's just too much. It is just too much for Vanessa, me. Vanessa, I'm going to ask you a question, dearie. And don't you get mad with me, but I got to know. Did you have an affair with Miles? Now you better be here again next time to hear what's going to happen on Body Love.